Good evening. Good evening. Hi, how is everyone doing today? We're great. How are you? Good. This is such an exciting time. So I'm just going to open it up with a few greetings and then Mr. Pike. I'm going to turn it over. Um, hi, Herman. And hi, Karen. And I can't pronounce your name. Well, welcome, welcome, welcome. I know you all are going to pre present some exciting information to us today. So let me first say greetings to the city of South Fulton and residents that have joined us today. Um, this is an exciting time and I've waited until the 25th of August uh, since our last meeting. Uh, what was that last month? I believe it is. Um, where we have residents that joined us and we talked about some new plans for our, our town center that's coming uh, to the Wolf Creek area. So to tonight, you all gave your feedback last month and tonight we're gonna be really unveiling the plans of what is proposed to be planned for this location. So I don't know if you're excited as I am, but I am ready and eager to get this party started. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to Mr. Pike and I, will we be taking questions towards the end? Is that our plan, Mr. Pike? Yes, ma'am, it'll be um, very similar. We'll actually be getting some more feedback. So we're gonna unveil some things this evening, but still get some more feedback so we can tweak the plan more. Uh, so I think Herman and his team might be looking for a uh, round three of this. Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, we will be taking uh, questions from, from constituents and citizens today. All right. Well, let's get into it. Residents, please make sure you're tuning in and uh, staying very engaged of what we are about to present to you. And please present your questions because this is the time to do it. Um, I am going to go ahead and take my camera off and I'm turning it over to you, Mr. Pike. And thank you all for doing this. Absolutely. Well, Councilwoman Gomes, thank you very much for the opportunity. Uh, we've been working on this project uh, now it seems like uh, two or three years uh, <laughs> close to it at any rate. And so we're really excited. Um, when I first came to the city of South Fulton, I knew that uh, the, the mayor, council and the citizens really wanted to identify where the city center was going to be. Um, we went through a, a year long process with our economic development strategic plan. Um, through that plan, we identified nine development uh, nodes throughout the city. Uh, in all the districts and so there'll be developments that happen everywhere in our city um, but one of the things that we wanted to do in that strategic plan was identify where our town center was going to be and i think after a lot of community input a lot of feedback um, it was determined that we would do a town center development off of camp creek parkway and so uh, councilman gums hosted our first um, town hall uh, our town center town hall uh, a month ago we got a lot of feedback um, from uh, the citizens who were engaged. Um, so it gave us an opportunity to really sit down and think about how do we be thoughtful about creating a, a site plan that encompasses all the things that we've heard from the citizens. And so uh, Herman and his team uh, with Tate Hansen have been working with us on this project um, for, since the beginning. Uh, they have been really thoughtful about how to engage our citizens and how to make sure that we get all the feedback that we possibly can so that we can have the best plan that we can. And so at this point, I want to turn it over to Herman and his team uh, so they can go in to some of their methodology and some of the things that they use to determine how this uh, vision would come uh, to fruition that the citizens and the mayor and council have uh, for the town center. So Herman, if you would. Thank you so much and thank you. Christopher Pike and, and also Councilwoman Gums, thank you so much for the opportunity to, to work with you and to work with the city of South Fulton. It's, it's been extremely enjoyable, very exciting, and we're, we're having just a wonderful time. And as Chris Pike was saying, we've been able to do something of an analysis with the site, understanding the history, understanding some of the things that are man-made as well as natural and begin to look at what might comprise and make up for town center. With that, we've had a lot of opportunity to look at different programs from cultural to commercial and retail, mixed use, residential, outdoor space and green space. 
And we've also been looking at, well, what are some of the other cities doing, uh, especially with the town centers and cultural centers that have been coming online recently? We've been able to get a lot of really good information. And what I would like to do at this point is introduce our team members, two of our senior designers that have been working on the project. That's Deb Maya and Karen. And Karen is going to walk us through where we're at. Um, and most importantly, just invite comments, invite opportunities for, for you guys to see, as well as just really sort of embrace the process. We would love to be able to come back to you after this presentation with something that's a little bit closer um, to some of the things that we've been able to capture as well as envision and put together towards a town center design and plan. We understand that while we're early, things may still have the opportunity to be tweaked and to be modified some. So this is really, again, building upon a vision plan in terms of what a direction might go. And with that, I would love to turn things over to you, Karen. Hello, everybody. Hope everybody is doing well today. Um, I'd like to start by thanking uh, Councilwoman Gums and Mr. Pike for this opportunity. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen, and then we can get started um, with the presentation. So just a couple of things before we get started. Um, we want this to be extremely um, interactive and also be able to gain as much as input as possible from everybody who's plugging in today. So we're going to go through a, a couple of slides that talk about how you can be extremely involved in this presentation. Um, first thing is, if you're joining with your screens, um, you don't have to do a whole lot. Uh, you're going to be um, looking at um, buttons and icons that you can click and answer, ask your questions or um, input your comments on. But if you are uh, joining with your mobile phone, you can open the camera app and you can scan the QR code that is going to appear on the next slide. And this QR code will take you to this presentation. And in every slide, there's going to be a ask a question button which you can click on to ask your question, record your comment, or any idea that you come across as you as you're you know hearing me present. Um, last time around, we were we had a lot of citizen feedback that we had received. So the goal of this presentation is to for us to present it as a follow up on what we've come up with so far, and we will have a Q and A towards the end. So make sure to keep asking your questions throughout the presentation. I will stop on the slide for a minute so that everybody can scan your QR code um, and log on to this presentation. This helps us to keep a record of every question and every comment that you have um, so that we can have that with us to analyze and address as we move forward with this visioning process. I'm going to stay on this for 10 more seconds and then I'll move on to the next slide. At any point throughout the presentation, you can still log into ahaslides.com slash um, town center and then you would be able to access the presentation. So our goal for this presentation is to present 
um, our ideas as a follow-up to uh, the previous town hall that we had. Uh, we, we aim to collect your feedback by way of questions and comments. Uh, so please, please use the ask a question uh, button to um, input your questions and your comments so that we have a record of that. We have been working on some preliminary approaches based on the feedback we received last time. Um, so we're going to present that and we're extremely excited. Uh, we need your input on things that we are presenting today, whether you like or you dislike or anything that is critical that needs still needs to be addressed um, so that we can work with you in creating a comprehensive plan. So help us by recording your thoughts and questions um, throughout the presentation. So brief recap on where uh, we left things last time around. Um, these are some of the thoughts uh, that were the highest polled in the questions that we asked and the comments that we received. So some of the key improvements that were needed in the area that we are looking at were uh, a variety of retail establishments and restaurants. We needed to look at traffic mitigation strategies accessible multi-use trails and pedestrian mobility enhancements, conserve the existing natural context and promote more parks and green spaces, bring in a cultural program to celebrate the Wolf Creek Amphitheater and um, just the potential of the area, and safety and security enhancements to the site. We also recorded a highest poll on some of the key programs that um, everybody was asking us to explore. And those were restaurants, a city hall, retail, parks, public safety, and museums. The top five town center elements that uh, everybody polled on to focus on was dining, bringing in more arts and culture, um, of course, retail, Upscale retail had a high poll, uh, parks and streetscape, entertainment, and programs of residential. We did ask a question about what were the kinds of museums that you wanted to see, and the highest polled last time around was music, earth and science, and history. Apart from that, you did give us 64 plus different kinds of programs that we are thinking about as we go through this visioning process. So this was last time, it was extremely helpful for us to just go and get inspired and work on a preliminary approach on what could be um, City of South Fulton's town center. Just to refresh everybody on the site location and, and overall connections, the site is located south of the Van, Van Divers Lake um, home to the Wolf Creek Amphitheater. Um, it's a 200 plus acre site. Um, so that is an aerial image that shows the rough boundaries that we are uh, taking into consideration for this preliminary approach. The, the site that is called out as cultural center is um, the home to the Wolf Creek Amphitheater, but really the, the big part of this um, area is that it's potential to establish and amplify the connections, both vehicular and both pedestrian. Um, the green dotted lines that you're able to see are just our idea of diagramming what could be pedestrian connections that connect the site to the existing assets, both nature and man-made that are already there. Then we asked ourselves, what can a master plan for a town center begin to look like? And in order for us to come up with a framework, we had to um, bring in uh, design districts, which kind of grouped all the different programming that could be possible in this area into certain categories. And the overall categories that we're looking at are residential, government, education, entertainment. And we see the ecological aspect of the site as a connector for all this different programming and, and how we address this in, in, um, you know, in relationship to how traffic can be mitigated and more parking opportunities can be captured on the site. We want to create synergy in developing this framework. And some of the key aspects that we are considering in going about laying out a program for the site are mainly the access roads, Enon and Merck, as they come, up, come off of Camp Creek Parkway the boulevard that is already existing, Sanford J. Jones, the Wolf Creek Amphitheater, the Wolf Creek Library, Camp Creek and the Aero ATL Greenway extension, 
the landfill park, and Van Divers Lake. All of these elements really help us build a cohesive site plan that can begin to represent the programming that everybody wants to see. This is just an ideas board of our process, our different iterations, which we did over the course of the time since our last town hall to come up with an approach that we can present to you. We started looking at what can our master plan zones begin to look like. We know that there is a Wolf Creek Amphitheater that is a very strong cultural focal point. So our cultural center could potentially be zoned around the Wolf Creek Amphitheater. A city hall or a public safety headquarters would need primary access from a street. So we thought Enon Road would be the best location to bring that access to a government program and kind of anchor that edge of the master plan. We want to be able to capture retail along the streets so as to activate the communication with the public and really create a walkable, bikeable, and safe street um, in all of our um, access roads that we have right now. The mixed use program, everything in orange that you're seeing is and a potential for us to capture the varied programming ideas that you have given us with retail, with restaurants, with residential, with, with just bringing it and making it a people-focused place. And the three main roads that are existing are Enon Road, Merck Road, and Sanford J. Jones Boulevard. Apart from this, there can be potential to capture new roads that bring new connections and really ease mobility through the entire site. This is our preliminary master plan approach. Just to walk you through our ideas, like I begin to say, the Wolf Creek Amphitheater is the focal cultural focal point that we are um, kind of identifying in this plan. And from there spans all of our cultural elements, starting from the museums, a central pavilion for people to access all of this program to, and then a music museum. So we wanted to flank the pavilion with two museums. And we are also looking at an indoor venue, which can be connected to the music museum and retail along the boulevard uh, so as to activate the boulevard to its maximum potential and make it extremely uh, pedestrian focused and walkable. Everywhere where you're seeing mix is a potential for us to capture mixed use. That could be ground floor retail with some residences above. The city hall has its own anchoring in the site where it kind of takes precedence and creates its own, um, own uh, sequence where it has this uh, frontage to a grand green court that could be a public court for people to uh, congregate in. And really the site plan is focused on creating a place that is walkable, that is bikeable, and that is approachable by everybody um, in the city of South Fulton. Just a reminder to record your questions and comments by clicking on ask a question in every slide that you come across. With the site plan, with the preliminary approach to the site plan, um, we identified what can be our parking opportunities because with all of this programming, where can we really sneak in those parking decks that are required so that we can mitigate the traffic. The big idea being for encouraging citizens to park and walk to access all of these programs. And this is a diagram that begins to show where can potential parking opportunities happen in the site plan. With this presentation, we wanted to address a big concern that, that was the highest polled in our, um, in our previous town hall, which was traffic mitigation. One of the biggest things to come, come up with strategies for traffic mitigation is widening of the streets that are already there. Um, Enon Road and Mark Road and Sanford J. Jones Boulevard are all existing streets that have the potential to be widened. So we took a stab at what can that widened street module begin to look like um, as it celebrates the idea to enhance pedestrian mobility in this, um, in this region. Currently, right now, um, Enon and Merck and even Sanford J. Jones Boulevard 
this is the street profile that is existing. There's hardly any sidewalk. There are two lanes um, of, for traffic, and hence it creates a bottleneck for heavy vehicular flow. Imagine Enon and Merck Road expanded with two lanes of traffic on either side, a, a, a bike-focused lane, um, tree lanes and street furniture and a comfortable sidewalk that kind of responds to the programming that is being proposed and really makes the street something that people can walk, people can bike in and uh, for people to congregate in. Um, some of the images that begin to resonate with the ideas that we've come up with for the street are uh, down below for you to look at. We did a similar approach for um, Sanford J. Jones because Sanford J. Jones Boulevard also takes um, a similar profile. Because it's a boulevard, we wanted to celebrate the essence of a boulevard, which is slowed down traffic. It's more of a shared street, which can be converted over the weekends into a farmer's market. So what we thought was maybe it's a central median, a tree lined median that, that kind of celebrates and breaks down. And it's a two way street um, with dedicated bike lanes, street furniture, signage, um, bike, bike racks and flanked by programming on either side that kind of begins to create the town center that we are envisioning for the city of South Fulton. Both these modules begin to cater to uh, creating a favorable and an accessible street that champions pedestrian mobility. We also looked at precedents of similar efforts for inspiration, um, as Herman was mentioning in the very beginning. So here are a few. We looked at Sandy Springs' uh, city center, or it's also called City Springs, um, just to understand how can different programming be brought in and uh, be intertwined with green space and pedestrian-focused spaces. Um, this is the Sandy Springs Performing Arts Center, which is uh, anchored by a central lawn that is more um, people-focused for people to congregate in. We looked at Alpharetta City Center and similar aspects like the Sandy Spring City Center, you can begin to see in the Alpharetta City Center. Of course, the biggest element here is the city hall that is uh, the central point of focus. And we also explored how can we begin to um, dream about retail and entertainment being um, a part of this master plan. So these are some images of Avalon and the battery um, that we begin to look at. So this is kind of um, at the end of our presentation right now, uh, but I wanna ask everybody, are there other examples of city centers and town centers and other developments that you have been inspired by um, that you think would be a great cue for us um, as we go forward with this process of master planning the site. Um, so you will be able to enter your um, comments in the slide and we can, um, we'll have a recorded version of all of your answers um, with us as we proceed. I will stay on this for a minute. Um, this is towards the end of our presentation. So if you have, um, if you were able to record your questions, we would have a copy of that so we can move into a Q&A shortly after this um, and we can have that Q&A happen.
I will stay on for 10 more seconds and then we will move into the Q&A. Great. Thank you, everybody, for these suggestions. Thank you so very much for participating. We have your input to guide us in this visioning process. Um, Mr. Pike, um, we can take some questions now. So I'm going to moderate some of the questions that we received. Um, and then after a couple of questions, maybe I can turn things over to Ms. Joy to uh, moderate some of her questions as well. Um, so the first question is, has the land for the town center already been acquired? Was it owned by Fulton County or private citizens? Mr. Pike? Yes, uh, great question. That's actually a uh, property that is in transition from the county to the city. So it was county owned property um, that is transitioning to the city of South Fulton. Great, thank you, Mr. Pike. Mm -hmm. Next question is, is residential over retail part of the plan? Yes. For now, we are exploring um, the idea to create ground floor retail and potentially have a residential program above the retail. What will become of the transfer station in the area that says Landfill Park? There are a lot of precedents that we explored that look at uh, transforming a landfill into parkscape uh, that can be accessed by the citizens. It is a much deeper conversation that we would have to engage in, but there is a possibility that it can become that it can be programmed towards usable space. And I'll also um, ask Mr. Pike to chime in on this if he has any additional comments. No, I think your comments were, were right on spot. Uh, we're at definitely looking at some opportunities um, to put that into a usable state. Uh, but obviously, there's a lot of things that to go into using uh, former landfill space. Um, for, for recreational purposes and things like that. Great. Will streetlights and sidewalks come to Enon and Merck Road? That is the intention uh, for road enhancements and widening, but I will defer to Mr. Pike on that. Uh, all of that will be planned uh, for the town center project. So, um, you know, our goal and one of our number one objectives is to make this um, very connected and very walkable. So obviously that's going to include sidewalks and, and lighting and other pedestrian safe uh, means of transportation. So definitely those will be things that we will look at as we expand the area. Uh, we do have, uh, we are exploring access to Camp Creek um, on how we can connect and create pedestrian paths and trails that connect to the creek. Um, and also potentially connect to the uh, planned uh, greenway that um, that is part of the Aero ATO master plan. Is it in the vision to keep Enon Road tree lined? It is. If e Enon Road does have quite a few trees, um, that, that line up the road so that we would look at enhancements um, to the street as it currently stands. What is the environmental impact of such a large area? That is a great question, Mr. James. We are um, in the very preliminary stages of our visioning process. As we move forward, we are going to be engaging um, specialists who are going to inform us on this um, so that we can, you know, in the best interest of the natural context that is there, put forward a, an approach that addresses this. Mr. Pike, if you have any additional comments to add to that. No, I, I think you uh, were spot on and hit the nail on the head with that. 
I, I will say that there are some questions on the YouTube feed uh, okay. as well. Uh, so we might want to get to to some of those just so we make sure we're addressing everyone Definitely. that may not be plugged into the system. Uh, one of the questions is, does the entertainment include places like Dave and Buster's bowling, uh, round one, et cetera? Um, I think we're looking at all options as it relates to uh, entertainment. I think it's a little uh, premature to, to identify specific types of brands of entertainment. Uh, but definitely we're looking at all options to make this a, a opportunity that lends itself to all different types of entertainment for uh, families and uh, individuals. Great. So is a skateboard BMX park in the plan? That is a great idea. We will consider it. Um, I will turn things over to um, Ms. Joy. Um, because she said she was going to moderate uh, some extra questions that were coming in the YouTube feed. So, Ms. Joy, um, I will yield the floor to you. Okay, everyone, can you hear me? I will yes. be allowing the questions to um, pop up on the screen. And so, is the location drawing just presented accessible on the City of South Fulton's website? Uh, it currently is not because we have just discussed it today. Uh, so we will be looking to provide that information uh, after this presentation. Will golf carts be allowed? Great question. We get asked that a lot. Um, I think that will be something that comes out as we get more in deep in depth in the planning. Um, there will probably be some opportunities to discuss golf carts. This is just a comment. Lots of Tamarack safe circular area for kids and a space for live improv, improv music is suggested. Also, we need to make sure we include facilities and activities for teens and young adults as well. And there were several constituents that agreed. District two has the most higher end residences and higher property taxes. What other areas will have this type of development or any type of development? Uh, that's a great question. Um, as I had mentioned earlier, when we opened up the presentation, I alluded to the economic development strategic plan that we have. Uh, in that strategic plan, it identified nine development areas throughout the city. So there'll be eight areas that we'll focus on uh, with similar type programming and development. Uh, that is, and there's a there's a district in each of the, or there's a development area in each of the council districts. So there'll be plenty of opportunity for people to have access to uh, many things and other types of development. Concerns about the landfill. How close is the landfill and when is the landfill closing? The ethane is burning off. Uh, well, the landfill has been closed for some time um, and uh, it is close to the landfill. What will happen throughout the process of this as we go and do more in-depth uh, explore, exploration and more in-depth study, we'll actually be looking at um, some of those things. So environmentals and all of, and all of that will be done uh, to make sure that we are in compliance with all of the regulations that need to take place. So we're definitely aware of those um, concerns and issues. Does the entertainment include a place like Dave and Buster's bowling, round one, et cetera? Yes, that was the question that I had answered earlier. We definitely will be looking to have those types of entertainment in the district. Uh, what specific brands those will be, it's really too early to determine at this point, uh, but we definitely intend to have that level of activity in the district. What is the impact on the estimated regular traffic flow if there's a concert happening at Wolf Creek? Does mixed use mean apartments? And will this potentially be MARTA accessible? Uh, that's a great question. 
Um, so obviously, when we're finishing, when we're going through the planning process, as we'd mentioned earlier, traffic flow will definitely be a big part of that. Uh, we have been in com conversations with uh, uh, Herman and Karen and their group about understanding what traffic flow needs to happen, understanding how, you know, we are aware that when there's an event at Wolf Creek Amphitheater, that's going to put a specific demand on traffic. So we're definitely taking all of that into account. And so once we have the uh, more in-depth version of the site plan, uh, we will definitely make sure that those items are addressed. What is the timetable for this project? Well, I will say that um, we have requested uh, funding in the fiscal 22 year budget for economic development. That money that we are requesting would be to finish out the rest of the in-depth in planning that we need to have. Uh, our goal is to, by the end of um, the fiscal year or around this time next year is to have an RFP put together uh, for the potential to um, bring on a uh, master developer. And so we anticipate that um, working with the mayor and the council that we can have a, a team that's been identified um, this time next year uh, to move the project forward. Um, I will say that's a pretty aggressive timeline. I would like to say that, you know, these things do take time. For example, one of the examples that um, Karen used was the Sandy Springs Town Center. It took them 12 years to do that project. Um, so I don't anticipate that it would take us that long because we've put a lot of the foundational things in place that we need to make it move faster than that. But it's definitely, um, you know, a, I would say a three to six year project. Um, and that's being pretty aggressive. I'm sorry, I was having technical difficulties. What was the response to activities for teens and young adults? Uh, at this point, we're looking at all type of programming. Um, someone asked a similar question about uh, Dave and Busters and some other activities. I think we recognize that um, there aren't many family oriented or teen and young adult activities in the city. And so all of those will be addressed. It's a little early for us to talk about specific type of what types of businesses will be in the town center. But we understand the, the different types of companies. That we That was the last question for the Q&A. So you can take over, Mr. Pike. Uh, well, Councilman Gum, I, I, that really concludes our second town hall. That was a lot shorter than the first one. <laughs> it was, it was, but yeah. very exciting. Um, and I definitely love the question about the uh, golf carts. Uh, that's one of my uh, dreams and hopefully, you know, everybody else can kind of buy into it. And I definitely hear the residents as far as, you know, activities. Um, so there's a whole vision and process again that we will continue with the residents um, in District 2. Now, Mr. Pike, is there a way if they uh, were not able to uh, share some of their thoughts and concerns who they can email to just kind of chime in on this. Cause I know some people will look at this afterwards and I want to make sure that there's an opportunity for them to kind of share their thoughts. Sure. And Karen, you can correct me if I'm wrong. If someone's watching this video after this, that, that code will still work and they can submit their responses from the videos. It will still be live. Is that correct? The code and the uh, presentation will not be accessible, but um, okay. as part of the video, can I go ahead and share my screen once again? That shows an email a contact that you can reach out to with your com comments, with your questions. Um, give me just one second. I'll go to the screen. So you can reach out to DSF at cityofsouthfultonga.com. GOV. And this um, contact can be used to record your questions, your comments and ideas, and the city will be uh, receiving them directly um, and, and will be uh, recording it. And uh, this slide will be a part of the, uh, the recorded presentation video.
in Councilwoman Gums's uh, web pages. Awesome, awesome. So again, I hope that everyone is excited and engaged in this process. Again, we are doing our best to make sure that residents are able to weigh in and uh, give their thoughts on what they think the town, should, town center should uh, be and what it should have. So I will encourage you all, if your neighbors uh, have missed this chat, to share it with them so they can also take a look at the renderings and what was revealed tonight um, on this town hall. So again, thank you, Mr. Pike, for all the work that you're doing. We're super excited about the future of the city of South Fulton. Um, and we want to continue to keep moving this along. So is there anything last things you need to say to get us all excited still? <laughs> I, well, I think if we had any more excitement tonight, we probably wouldn't be able to stand it. So I just want to uh, thank you again for you know allowing us to participate in this process. Um, we're definitely really excited about what this is going to mean for our city moving forward. Um, it's definitely, we definitely, you know, I will say we've moved the needle faster than most new cities in the state. So I think that uh, the uh, residents can really feel confident that, um, you know, we have thoughtful leadership that understands what the residents want and when they want it. So mm -hmm. um, it's definitely been, <laughs> it's definitely been, um, you know, a fast uh, process. And so we, we intend to keep it moving fast. Awesome. And are you saying that it may be a part three to this? Uh, I think as we get more and we delve down more into some uh, more of the comments, uh, especially with the specifics of the types of programming, I think what we may do is come back at a, at a later time and bring some more updated information. Um, as we get through the new budget, uh, we'll be doing some more of the environmental things and, and, and things that will be needed uh, to uh, to make some more concrete decisions about it, specifically where things are going to go. And so I think that will warrant a, another session. Awesome. Awesome. Well, again, thank you so much, Mr. Pike. And again, thank you to all of the residents that attended tonight. Um, again, look out for the city of South Fulton and all the great things that are happening in our neighborhood. Um, if you have any questions or concerns, certainly you can reach out to Mr. Pike. You can reach out to myself or you can also share your thoughts at DSF at city of South Fulton dot gov. Is that right? That's yep. right. Uh, no, it's DSF at city of South Fulton GA.gov. Oh, okay. That's what I was about to say. DSF yeah. at city of South Fulton GA.gov. Okay. Yep. All right. We're looking for your input and please stay engaged. And if there are any questions at all, please make sure you reach out to your leadership. I want to thank uh, you. And just all. one more. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. My, my apologies. I just wanted to again thank uh, Herman and Tate Hansen with Tate Hansen and his group. Uh, for the work that they've done to help us get this far along in the pro program. I would definitely agree with that. He has been around for quite some time now, so uh, he's part of the family. So again, thank you, uh, Herman and your team, and uh, to everyone that joined tonight. Good night, and thank you for joining. Have a good evening. <laughs>